this week on the Analog Circle Podcast is Ghost of Tsushima further away from release than we thought. Could PlayStation 5 be releasing in March 2020? The discless Xbox will be $249.99? Yves Guillemot talks about the Splinter Cell franchise and why we haven't seen it. And Microsoft tells what we will see during the next Inside Xbox. All of these stories and plenty, plenty more in episode number 97. I am your host, Keon Mitchell, and as always, welcome to the podcast. Man, oh man. Now I want to let you guys know two things. Things before we get started. If you want to be a part of the show, you can do it two different ways by calling in at 443-216-9934, or you can email the show, and the email is the analog circle podcast at gmail.com. The second thing that I want to bring up is if you guys want a $25 xbox gift card no one has claimed it yet so all you have to do is go back to episode 96 get the code and uh just hey call in or email the show to let me know that you got it that way i will stop advertising that but that's about it for the announcements brothers god dog outside of that man what have i been into Cause that's usually what I start with, what I've been into. And honestly, I have not had any time to game this week. I think I played the order 1886 again, just for recording purposes on uh, YouTube. I recorded a live stream of it. It was only like 22 minutes. And that was just for me to check to see how well the streaming was going. And it looks like it came out pretty good. You can go over to the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is the Analog Circle Podcast. Go over there. You can listen to the podcast over there. Look at some uh, some videos that I put up earlier streams. Or, well, I mean, whatever the heck you want to do. Good grief. But outside of that, nothing more to report on that front. But anyway, I definitely want to get into my favorite And I mean this, God darn, I mean this. This is my favorite part of the podcast, and it is the feedback section. Now, last week, I was asking you guys about GameStop. How much longer can GameStop hold on? I mean, good grief. Are they on the bridge? Are they on the edge? Are they about to fall off? I mean, who knows? But of course... Mr. Cody Clark wrote in, and he had a rebuttal. Now, this is his rebuttals, guys. He says, and the name of his email is Geek Stop. Now, he continues to say in his email, I don't know what the future holds for GameStop. They don't seem to be the de facto game store anymore. They do own Think Geek, and every time I pass by one, it seems more like a Spencer's Gifts or a Hot Topic that happens to sell games. I gotta agree with you on that, brother. He continues to say, maybe Amazon will buy them too. It's hard to think that 15 or 20 years ago, there were Funko Lands and eBay games all over. So... I have absolutely no idea. Hey, Cody, I want to thank you, brother, for this email. And I have to agree. I don't have an idea what might happen to GameStop. I mean, we, we, we've seen it. Older, older gamers, we've seen quite a bit of things happen along this gaming journey that we have all been on for 20 or 30 plus years, like myself. And we've seen different video stores go out of business. I mean, Blockbuster Video, that was the thing to do on a Friday. Get a video or go and get a video game, rent it for the weekend, take it back on Sunday, and you're back to school. I mean, that was just the end thing to do because I was broke and my parents wasn't spending $50 on a game every time a new one came out. 
So guess what I had to do? Arrow's video or Blockbuster. I was coming to see him and I was trying to get one. And, uh, we see that that has actually gone to the side. I mean, you have the red box. Now you have Amazon that has Prime. You got Netflix. You got, what's another one? I'm, I'm forgetting the other one that they have out there, but y'all know the name of it. And we saw that the video business itself, the stores, they fell by the wayside because of so many digital services. And like I said, Redbox, that's not even digital. You just pick it up, pay $2, take it back, and that's it. So it, it seems like to me that I, that if I'm doing a guesstimate or an estimate or whatever you want to call it of how long GameStop has, I truly think within the next 10 years that it could be over it could be being called quits because they are losing a ton of money and like cody clark brought up he did say it's reminding him of him of a spencer's or a um hot topic store and you're right i went in there the other day and uh i actually was looking for some gift cards to buy because nobody else seemed to have the gift cards so i had to go to gamestop pick some up, and when I walked in there, man, I saw all kind of squishies, I saw all kind of action figures, all kind of statues, all over the doggone place, and I said to myself, my gosh, they had backpacks, they had all kinds of stuff, and then, like Cody said, then they had the games, I was like, man, oh man, I can't even bob and weave through all of this stuff that y'all got going on right now, but I guess that's what they have to do. They got to bring more merchandise in there. They got to try to find a way to keep the doors open. And and to me personally, I mean, good gosh, I think they're missing out on a golden opportunity right now. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because Best Buy no longer does it. The the Gamers Unlock card, having 20% off of a game, a new game. Oh, my gosh. They could clean up. They could really, I'm not saying they're going to make a super duper comeback or anything like that, but I think that could prolong them from actually having their doors closed maybe a few years earlier. And I thought that their rental service would have been excellent, but because their computer systems weren't up to date, there was no way they could do it. So I see that GameStop is trying. They're trying to claw their way and stay in, but I don't know. I think it's inevitable that eventually their doors will close, however long it's going to take. Like I said, maybe 10 years, but I'm not even sure about that. But uh Cody Clark, Thanks again for writing in, you awesome brother. And man, oh man, you keep this doggone section going. You are the heartbeat, brother. So, without further ado, guys, I mean, good grief. I think it's time. I think it is time to get into the gaming news that went down this week. Let's go ahead and start it off with a little bit of Ubisoft news. Now, so for, so for the last two years or so, right, people have speculated that a new Splinter Cell would be shown at E3. Well, in an interview, CEO of Ubisoft, Mr. Yves Guillemot, gives us a little insight on what's going on with the franchise. Now, Mr. Guillemot said this, and I quote, Last time we did a Splinter Cell, we had lots of pressure from all the fans saying, Don't change it. Don't do this. Don't do that. So some of the teams were anxious to work on the brand on, on the brand. He continues to say also because of Assassin's Creed and all of the other brands taking off people wanted to work on those brands more. So we have to follow what they like to do. End of quote. Now, if you guys want to get more information about this this was a interview and i want to get this man's name right uh he he works at ign he's the guy that's always talking about xbox what is his name mccarthy or, or um i can't remember the guy's name just go over to ign go into the um the section where he interviews so many people this guy has some great interviews by the way i'm just sorry i can't remember his name but to me this says 
that we might not be seeing a splinter cell for quite some time. I know it's been years that it's been speculated. E3 is going to be shown. E3. But it looks like to me that the team that worked on Splinter Cell at the time, they were anxious. Fans were saying, do this, do that. It was so much pressure on their shoulders to get it right. And because of that, it seems like they have shied away. And in the process of them shying away, their other franchises have taken off. And because of that, they're like, well, forget that. I think we want to work on these for a while. Now, whether it's to be believed or not, Yves Guillemot, he said that he has to follow what they want to do. So maybe they have a different process over there at Ubisoft. Maybe they want their employees to work on projects that they're going to be passionate about. And as it stands right now, Rainbow Six has been doing great. Far Cry has been doing great. I mean, what else do they have? Uh, uh, Assassin's Creed. Did I say Assassin's Creed? I don't know. But they have so many different franchises on that side that they're working with and that they have out in the marketplace. They're doing great. I mean, Rainbow Six has doggone stood the test of time a game that came out broken is now one of the most successful ips that they have so with all of that being said i'm gonna say i don't think we're gonna see a splinter cell at this year's e3 i mean we, we you gotta think about it too i mean they have what is it um the new game was well, not even new the the game uh with the main character jade and i think the other character's name is piggy or piglet or, or, or one of them jokers name talking about a pig or something they're bringing that back out was it beyond evil or something like that beyond good and evil that's making a comeback so i mean they got a lot of things in the works so once again i'm gonna say i don't think that splinter cell is gonna show up at e3 and watch just watch out of spite your dog on gonna hear the darn lenses go up and it's gonna be a splinter cell at e3 i'll be doggone anyway we'll see though moving on from this story let's get into a little bit of PUBG. now in PUBG news creator and head developer brendan green said that he will no longer be affiliated with the development of PUBG. Instead, he will be heading a new research team called PUBG Special Projects as a creative, as a creative director and consultant. Now, who will be taking his spot? You may be asking. Well, his name, he goes by. His name is our old buddy. I'm gonna butcher it. Uh, Tay Seok Jang. He is leading the development team as it stands now. Now, if you were wondering, what is this, this, uh, I guess this uh, new team that um, Brendan Green is working for called Special Projects. Well, they work on gameplay tools, pipelines, and creating new tech. So with that being said, could this mean that PUBG might be in better hands? I mean, it's possible. People have asked for certain things to be fixed about the game. It doesn't seem like the PUBG Corp team has really been fast to respond, or maybe they have. I don't know, but maybe, just maybe, this guy might get things back on. Well, I'm not going to say he needs to get them back on track because the game has been doing phenomenal. Now, I don't know how well it's been doing lately, but as it stood a couple months ago, the game was doing great. I mean, it's on mobile, it's on console. I mean, good grief, a great romping good time. But I do remember reading somewhere where I believe the developer, this guy, um, Brendan Green, I think he said that he did not want to work on a sequel, so it probably wouldn't be a PUBG Part 2, but I guess that's yet to be seen. Maybe he meant under his watch, and maybe the guy, Mr. Jang, was taking his spot. Maybe they'll get him to work on it. Who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see, but one thing is for sure, he will not be in there under the development team let's move on into some quick news some real quick hits i call it time warp news plunk, plunk, plunk. y'all remember that sound right back in mario but uh hellblade just came out on the nintendo switch on april 11th and i gotta tell y'all man whoa whoa man i looked at a what was it it was a um it was a uh good grief what's it called 
the thing on digital, not digital, um, it's called, uh, Digital Foundry, yeah, Digital Foundry had actually did a a um a breakdown of the game and got dog. I gotta say, man, my hat goes off. Well, it wasn't Ninja Theory that actually ported this. It was another company. I can't remember the name of the company that ported it over to the Switch. But wow, what an amazing job they did! Now, of course, the textures aren't. The same as the, the console versions on the Switch and in dock, in, in portable mode, I'm saying in dock mode, portable mode, it's a little, it takes a bit of a hit, but not really. Between it being docked and undocked, it's darn near the same quality. So my hat goes completely off to this team. I mean, the game looks good. They had it side by side with the console versions. And my goodness, for this to have been on the Nintendo Switch, man, they did a darn good job. And also, while we're on Nintendo, just to switch gears a little bit from room, switching a little bit, I gotta let y'all know, I don't know if y'all read some of the reviews on the, um, on the Labo VR. Man, people are actually saying it is not a bad device. It's gotten really good reviews so far. And for it to be, what is it, $40 to get into it? I think 70 bucks. it'll get you um a few more things, accessories to go along with the Labo cardboard. But my thing is, my goodness, $40, people are not mad. They're like, this is not a bad device. It doesn't suck. So maybe if you're interested and seeing Mario in a VR setting or seeing Zelda in a VR setting, then maybe you might want to get it. Of course, it's not going to be PlayStation levels. It's not going to be HTC levels. But for $40, I think it is worth a shot. And I think I'm going to pick this up, man. I think I just might mosey on down to Best Buy, baby, and pick this up. Goodness gracious, let's go ahead and move on, man. Let's get into some PlayStation news. Oh, my goodness. Now, it is official. After being in beta for six months, you can now officially change your username. Now, as far as pricing, the first change to your name will be free. But after that, it will be $10. Now, each time you change it from that point on, or if you're a plus member, it will cost you $5. So you got to be a plus member, get it down to $5. If you're not, be $10 every time you do it. Now, it's also an option where you can display your old and new name beside each other for 30 days so your friends will know it's you. Or you can go back to a previous PSN name for free. But once again, oh, now this is, now this is the caveat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Remember, once again, the games released before April 1st, 2018 may cause you issues. But any games released after that date should work fine. But. And I, and I will quote, Sony said this and I quote, it doesn't guarantee support. So if you're going to change your name, end of quote, if you're going to change your name, brothers and sisters out there, just, just be a little cautious. Just know that it might not work out a hundred percent. Some people have been saying that they've been losing data. Other people, I mean, game saves and trophies, but other people have reported and said that everything has been a o. Okay, so I guess it depends on what games you're trying to boot up. You know, if it's an older catalog before that April 1st, 2018 date, you might run into some problems. But nonetheless, I think this is great. A lot of PlayStation fans wanted this. They had been championing this for years and years and years. And finally, Sony has listened to you guys and you have name change support. This is great. And it's only $5. 
if you're a PSN member and $10 if you're not. And it's free the first go round. That's how they hook you, man. That's how they get you. You ever notice that that's how some people get on substances our first time is free. And then from that point on, you're on your own to get the money. Good grief. Let's go ahead and move on. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's get into some ghost of Tsushima news. Now, <laughs> oh man, we know that it hasn't been a ton of uh, new coverage or news about this title since 2017 at Paris Games Week. Now, it appears that Sucker Punch is hiring for a huge key role. And because of this, people are starting to speculate that the game won't be released for quite some time. Now, the role that they are hiring for is a narrative writer who can, and I quote, help create engaging narrative content. Now, these uh, these are the responsibilities that the narrative writer would be responsible for. So here we go. Let's run through the list. It says they have to work closely with content designers to write missions for an open world game. That means Ghost of Tsushima is going to be open world. Oh, I'm excited and salivating. Now they continue to say, let's see what else. They're going to have to uh, contribute to other creative areas of the narrative, including secondary game content, dialogue barks and writing content for marketing materials now when i read this i said secondary game content does that mean it's gonna be dlc i am leaning towards it probably being the case now they continue to say um they're gonna be responsible for writing high quality dialogue under tight deadlines for a diverse cast of characters who live in the world of 13th century Japan. Now, this is the thing Now, you guys might have heard me a couple of paragraphs ago say that they would be um, they would be responsible, responsible for dialogue barks. I, didn't, I wasn't sure what a dialogue part was. You know, roof, roof. I was not even in my mind. It, it, I don't know what the heck that is. So I looked it up. And it looks like dialogue barks mean it's it's a one off lines of dialogue that don't involve a player response menu or any back and forth. So I guess it's like um they, they basically broke it down where it's more of a cue for the player to know what to do. Like the enemy might say, I'm flanking left. I'm going to the left. Or somebody might say, I got to get up the ladder. You might want to try the ladder. Go, go, go. Something like that. Just to make sure that the player is engaged and they understand what the next step or the next thing is that they need to do. So this person is going to be in charge of quite a bit. Now, as far as people saying that this game, this is going to delay the game, it's not going to be out for quite some time, I don't know if I really buy into that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Because we know that development, people are in and out all the time. I know a guy that actually worked on, well, I don't know him. I mean, it's not like we kicking it and having doggone sodas and drinks together. It's not like that. But I met this guy who actually worked on Days Gone. That brother's gone on to another project. He's already moved on. He finished what he had to do, and that was it. So I bring up that point just to say that just because they are hiring for this position, it doesn't mean that the person that they had because we know this game has been being worked on for quite some time it doesn't mean that all of the progress that the other person may have made with the game just goes all the way to the wayside and they have to start over i mean hey looking at ea's situation or bioware people having nervous breakdowns and having to be out of work for months and months and months i mean who's to say that this guy just didn't need a break i mean they already said that you got to be able to get things together and and you know deadlines together under you know under tight circumstances the deadlines are tight so maybe this guy just said look i'm going on a vacation vacation i'm done i can't take it so for me i really think the ghost of tsushima is going to be out probably not this year but maybe 2020 
I don't know. It would be great if it was this year, but I highly doubt it. But anyway, we'll see about this. But uh, moving on to the next story. Now, this is some more uh, quick news. Now, Microsoft are offering new subscribers uh, Game Pass for three months for one dollar. Four quarters, ten dimes, a dollar. Now, now, now listen to this, just to let you guys know, you know, some of the games that they actually just put into this service. Uh, here we go. Let, let's go ahead and go down the list real quick. They have a, a, I mean, some golf game. Okay. I don't know the name of the game. It's just some new golf game or whatever that's going in there. Prey is going to be in there. Monster Hunter World is making its way in there. The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, uh, Life is Strange 2, and Resident Evil 5 are all being added to Game Pass this month. Now, I got to say, brothers, oh, brothers, three months for a dollar? That is an amazing value. Oh, man. Amazing. Now, this is the thing. I've been hearing that people have been saying that Microsoft is doing this to pad stats and turn it into turning it into a negative, saying that, hey, the only reason why they're doing this is because Game Pass is suffering. Game Pass is terrible. This, that, the third. How the world can you be upset? That Microsoft is saying, look, we need customers. What's a good way to get somebody in the door? Guess what, man? We're not going to give you a month for a dollar. We're going to give you three months for one dollar. That is incredible. Over a hundred games. Some of the games that I name, they may be slightly older, but still an incredible value. You can't be mad. Good grief, sit down and get glad. God dog, and pick up a controller and take advantage of this deal. This is great. And I hope that Microsoft continues to, to be very aggressive with this service and to let people know that, hey, we're in it. We are taking this, ser this serious. We are in it for the long haul for this service. And we're trying to get you in the door. Now, after three months, of course, it goes up to $10 a month. But gee whiz, the value is there. My gosh. Anyway, how can you hate? But let's move on from this story. God, dog, I wish I bought some water in here, man. My voice is getting groggily up in here, man. Woo! Sweating and all that stuff, man. But let's move on. Now, it's very few. Now, I got to tell y'all, man, it's, it's, it's just very few PlayStation VR games that get my attention. I mean, there was a few you had in Moss. I, I, and now, 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 granted, this is coming from a fraud because right now my PlayStation VR is still in the daggone box. So how excited could I really be about VR? But I'll tell you, Moss was a game that got my attention. The Batman game, I heard so many great things about it. It got my attention. I heard that Astro Bot is fantastic. So it's a couple of games out there that have really piqued my interest to finally open up the PlayStation VR. It's right there with the Nintendo Switch. But anyway, I got to tell y'all, tell y'all about this. Uh, when, when, you know, when a game has a name behind it, like Eric Chahi, who was behind one of the most cinematic games of its day, which was, and I quote, Another World. If you have not played Another World, oh my gosh, and you're in my age range, 30, 40 years old, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? That is one of the best most cinematic games I've ever played. Flashback was also there. Dolphin Software. That was the company. Just look it up. It was amazing. But my eyes, once I heard this guy was behind this, my eyes raised up. And they really got my attention. Well, him and his team, which is now called Pixel Reef, have been hard at work at this new project entitled Paper Beast, which is set in a sci-fi world, which looks similar to another world. 
Now, it looks like you will be discovering life on the planet, which will be a quote unquote fully simulated ecosystem, end of quote. And outside of that, details are sparse. Now, you can actually check out the trailer at pushsquare.com. Check it out over there. I got to tell you, when I heard this game was a thing, brothers, I, I looked at it. And usually, like I said, I'm like, ah, you know, VR is cool. I want to experience it. One day I'm going to open up the PlayStation VR and let y'all know what I feel about Moss and Astro Bot because it came with those two games. Oh, my gosh. But I looked at this and I said, huh, this is really interesting. Now, what the game is about, like I said, I don't know. The trailer just showed a few, a few flowers growing. It shows some beasts that look like something from Horizon Zero Dawn. They didn't look quite, uh, you know, like mammals. They look kind of like machines. And I said, good grief, this is so interesting. But nonetheless, I'm looking forward to it. It's coming to the PlayStation VR, I think sometime next year. So hopefully, this may be one of the games that gets a little more shine on that new PlayStation show that's about 15 or 20 minutes, which I actually love that format. But let's go ahead and move into some more quick news since we're already talking about Sony. In quick news, Days Gone will have an install size of, oh, get ready to clean out your daggone hard drive. It's going to be 67 gigabytes after the day one patch. So just know day one patches, they seem to be normal in gaming now. This is something that comes right away. And I'm sure, man, as the days go on, all oh, brothers... Oh, brothers, I get so excited to see what Days Gone is going to do. A lot of people had doubts. I had, I can't even say I really had a bunch of doubt because at the time when the first reveal, <clears throat> the first trailer, excuse me, by that coughing all in y'all and whatnot, my apologies, so unprofessional. But I got to tell you, when I saw the first reveal, on Game Informer, when they were showing the video, everybody was like, oh man, this looks stiff. This looks terrible. I was sitting there and I'm like, dang, I don't, I don't know where all of the hate, I don't know where all of this is coming from. This game actually looks like it's something there. It looks pretty good to me. And as the time has went on and on, people that were down on the game seem to be propping it up saying, okay, you might have something here. This may be something big. And since Sony wants to make this a franchise. I'm sure that Sony Bend is doing everything they can to make sure that they get it to that high level of a naughty dog, of a Sony Santa Monica studio. Now, I know y'all are saying, key on your dream. It's no way they're going to get it to that level, but you never know. They just may have something on their hands. I'm really excited about this. When I heard about the count of what do they call freakers? I don't know. They're not zombies. Nobody ever wants to claim the zombie term anymore. They're everything but a darn zombie. But they were saying that these guys, they can come in hordes of 50 to what? 500, which is insanity. I mean, this game, I really think that it's going to be great. I'm sure. This game, I have this game scoring on Metacritic. I think it's going to be uh, 85. I don't think it's going to reach 90 status, but I think it's going to be midway there, close to a 90. 85 on Metacritic. That's what I'm saying it's going to be. Who knows what it's going to be at the end of the day, but the game looks promising and i can't wait to see what sony ben actually comes up with moving on into the next story now earlier this week we saw star wars jedi fall in order but it was also revealed from a panel now i gotta be i gotta be serious with y'all now now wait a minute now 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 all right all right I, i'm 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 lying to y'all right now okay maybe Y'all saw Star Wars Jedi fall in order because I missed that trailer. All right. That's not something I looked at. My bad for lying to y'all just like that. Let me retract that. Um, but anyway, I'm getting back on point. 
Uh, it said, uh, but it was also revealed from a panel which confirmed that Microsoft is the marketing partner, which could mean that we could see gameplay of the game at the Microsoft E3 briefing, which would be dope. Now, on top of that, according to the Microsoft store, the game will run at 4K resolution and feature HDR. And it's a rumor going around right now, game players. Oh, yeah that the game is going to be releasing on November 15th. Now, when I heard November 15th, I said, okay, that seems like that's falling in line with the rumor that we heard about a new Titanfall coming out this year, which, man, now that I'm thinking of, I'm really genuinely thinking about this at this very moment. Was that Titanfall game Apex? Was that the game? Because technically, the rumor said that it would be out in 2019 in Apex, even though it might not be a fully-fledged Titanfall game. It is under the Titanfall name umbrella, so man, maybe that's it. And then that, that same rumor said that the Star Wars game, the EA Star Wars game, would be out in 2019. So November 15th, that's not too far-fetched. I mean, we'll have to see if that's true or not, but I'll tell you guys this really quickly just to kind of back up a little bit. The reason why I didn't look at the trailer is because I get tired of seeing these non-gameplay trailers. These think we are in 2019. Okay, graphics look amazing right now. They darn near look like cutscenes. I don't know why they always do this. When I saw that it, it looked like it was a it was a um a CG trailer and then found out it was because they said no gameplay was shown, I was out. I said, man, have you seen, I don't care how much hate that game gets, that game was dope. The Order 1886, back in, when did it release? 2014, 2015, I forget. But that game looked amazing for the time. And you mean to tell me that in 2019, we're still showing off CG trailers? Come on, man, get it together. Jeez me, Christmas. Anyway, little rant, my bad. Moving on to the next story. Now, let's get into that. This is interesting. Oh, oh, man. Let me catch my breath. Hold on. All right, I'm back, man. This is some interesting news. Let's get into some PlayStation 5 news. Now, before I start... I have to preference this by telling y'all, these are rumors. Oh, they are just the highest level of rumors. So with that being said, y'all know what I say. Take this with the mustard seed of truth. Now, according to a third-party European developer who is working on a PlayStation 5 launch title, he claims to know what the launch lineup will be for the PlayStation 5. Now, this is posted on Raw Paste if you want to check it out for yourself. So here we go. He says these are the following games. (laughs) Gran Turismo 7 VR. PUBG Remaster 4K, which is going to be free to play uh, with PlayStation Plus, and only, it's going to be, they're saying it's going to be an exclusive. It's only going to be available on PlayStation 5. Yikes, are you serious? He continues to say, Last of Us 2 Remaster will be out on the PlayStation 5. Ghost of Tsushima Remaster is going to be out. And he also said, that two to three AAA games. And then he moves on to say uh more and uh he says uh what's this uh two PlayStation VR titles. It's gonna be Battlefield Bad Company three and Harry Potter and the uh Harry Potter what okay Okay. He also goes on to say the newest Assassin's Creed and the one that, oh, listen to this, man. The the one, the one that really made me say, now, I don't know if this is bogus or not, but if this holds any kind of weight, I mean, any kind of weight, this is huge. He also said that Grand Theft Auto 6 
will be <laughs> coming out and it's going to be a Sony exclusive for a month. Now, let me back up on that. Now, he said that Sony is trying, actually, to make GTA 6 a PlayStation 5 exclusive for a month. Now, he talked about the, the setting of the game. It could take place in New York or Miami. Nobody knows. He can't say for sure. I want to say this for sure. This is freaking crazy to think that a GTA 6 could be exclusive. Now, once again, this is rumors. Do I believe some of this stuff? I do believe it's going to be a Last of Us 2 uh, remaster. I believe the Ghost of Tsushima 2, I mean, not 2, but Ghost of Tsushima is going to be remastered on the PlayStation 5. Those seem like logical guesses. Now, as far as Battle, uh, what, was, what is it? Battlefield Bad Company 3? I know a lot of people have been asking. I mean, they've been asking and salivating over getting this game. And if this is in the launch window, wow, that's big. But once again, that's a third party game. So that would mean that it would be available on the Xbox, uh, whatever you're going to call it, whatever they're going to call the next one. But let's get out of the games for a minute. I'm going to circle back around to this. But now that we have the games out of the way, let's talk about some rumors about the release date and what's under the hood. So. It's being said that it could release either in March of 2020 or November 2020. Now, I got to say, this, 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 this is quite amazing. But let, let, let me keep on going. It says it will be a small reveal in the second quarter of 2019. So that falls in line with uh E3 because second quarter is uh April, May and June and uh you know that that could be something but I want to jump back to this 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 March this possible March release date do I believe that Sony would have the guts to get out there in March and release a PlayStation 5 brothers I don't know. This is tricky. Because if you think about it, Nintendo did the same thing with the Switch. They showed that you can move console units in March. I can't recall a system. Man, in recent memory, outside of the Switch, actually releasing in March and it being a success this would be an amazing strategic move if this turns out to be true that in March 2020, that means Microsoft has got the scramble to get their stuff together because already Sony has the momentum. Sony has the AAA games. They have the single player games that gamers enjoy. I'm not saying every gamer loves what Sony does, but a big majority do. And just the fact that just going back to, you know, let's go to, you know, Dreamland. If GTA 6 is a timed exclusive, whew, that is ginormous. Do you know how many units would be moved? If, and that's if even GTA 6 is coming out that soon. I don't even know. But like I said, we're in Never Never Land right now for a moment. But um, now I don't know if I should even use that for a rap. Man, forget that. I don't believe what they said about Mike. Anyway, I think that um, this would be absolutely amazing if this is true. Once again, this is all speculation. Nobody knows for sure. But that's not where the rumors stop. I mean, stop. They continue on to talk about what the specs are. Now, once again, who knows if this is true because this is mighty beefy. Oh, this is like Arby's. They got the mates. So let's go ahead and get started. So the specs they're saying it's going to be as far as the CPU, a nanometer, a nano, a nanometer, uh, Ryzen eight core, 16 thread with an unknown speed. The GPU is going to be a 7 nanometer Navi architecture around four, around 14 teraflops. Now, wait a second. 
<laughs> Man, let me wipe my brow off, brothers. <laughs> now they continue to say now it's going to have some sort of ray tracing, but that won't be the main focus. Now it will focus on VR and 4K and have much better bandwidth overall. They continue to say that it's going to have 24, holy smoke, 24 gigabytes of GDD, GDDR6, 4 gigabytes of DDR4, which is going to be used for the OS. It's going to have a 2 terabyte hard drive. It's going to have up. It's going to have 8K upscaling and the DualShock 5 will have some sort of, some sort of camera inside for VR. Well, wait a, wait a frickin' minute. Now it's saying that the price point that this is now that this, this is what I got to say, brothers. I, I, I don't know about this because the price point. That this individual is saying that the PlayStation 5 is going to be for all of that tech. All of that technology, it's going to be five hundred dollars. I mean, wait a minute, wait a wait wait wait, wait a second, five hundred dollars for all of this. I mean, they said if this rumor is to be believed, that the DualShock Five is gonna have some sort of camera in it. What? It's serious. I mean, we've seen the, 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 the pictures of the controller where it looks like it's a LED screen on it. Man, oh man, I can only imagine that that controller, if it is true, and I think it's been debunked by now. So let's not even talk about that controller. But if that was true, I'm sure that controller would have been astronomically expensive. I mean, you think about the Wii U's controller and how much that was, and that didn't have it. I mean, well, it had some of that tech in it. Actually, did it was LCD screen. Anyway, just moving on from there, $500 for a system that can do some sort of ray tracing. It's going to have a Ryzen 8 core, 14 teraflops. Man, this thing is going to be a beast if these rumors are to be believed. Now, they continue to say, and this is allegedly that it's going to release next to the new PlayStation VR. Well, no, it's not going to release next to it's They're saying that the PlayStation VR is going to release next and that's going to um come out in the year 2020. Now, they're saying it's going to be wireless with a resolution boost of 2560 by 1440, 120 hertz, 220 field of view, and eye tracking, and a battery life of four to five hours with no breaker box. It'll have headphones and this. <laughs> now, wait, I got to call bull, bull crap on this because they're saying all of this technology is going to be $250. Wait a second. Now, 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 now the PlayStation VR just dropped in price after about what, two or three years on the market till around two, two around man i'm all tied up brother good grief let me get my dog on words together to about 250 dollars i think on black friday i was able to get the playstation vr along with moss and astrobot for 200 dollars and they're saying that this new wireless vr is gonna, which is gonna have 1440, 2560 by 1440 per eye. It's gonna have eye tracking, no breaker box, headphones, a four to five hour battery life for 250. I don't know. I think this is a real pipe dream. I don't know, man. I don't see this happening. But, I mean, good grief. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, that is the new rumor. That is a mouthful of daggone rumors. Like I said, if you want to check this out for yourself, go over it word for word, piece for piece. Where was this at? This was on, um, let's see. I want to get the website for y'all again. That was on, uh, what was it on? Something paste. I can't even find it right now. Something paste. Um, hold up. No, because I want to find it. So in case y'all want to check it out, raw paste. Go over to raw paste. This guy had all of this information. 
This is insane, man. Is it real or not? We shall see. I don't think we need to spend too much time on this, but if you want to chime in and leave your comments and say if you think it's true or not, you can call in at 443-216-9934, email the show at the Analog Circle Podcast at gmail.com. It's a shameless plug, I know. God darn it. Let's move on to the next quick story. Now, Sekiro dies twice. No, Sekiro Shadows died twice. Sold 2 million copies in 10 days. 2 million! That is fantastical. That is, that is, let me think of another word for that. That is, um, man, I can't even think of the word I wanted to say. It's just great. It's just that. It's wonderbar. Yeah, some German. Oh, yeah, I, I speak many different tongues. Wonderbar. Yeah, but nah, nah, I just learned that uh, last week. But, and, but nonetheless, this game is doing quite well, and I don't even understand why people are crying about Sekiro. Shadows die twice. It should be inclusive. Everybody should be able to play. Wow, 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 wow. People just crying. Just crying. The, this goes back to what Cody was saying a few weeks ago. People just cry over stuff. Look, not every game is for everybody. Just like not every car is for everybody. Do you think that BMW cares about somebody that has my salary or, or Mercedes or Bentley? No! Even if I could afford to the, the, the monthly payments, there's no way I could keep the upkeep up on the car. Life doesn't work that way. Everything is not inclusive. It's just not. And people crying about a game that is too hard, then just get better or don't play it. Those games that come from From Software, I don't play. Why? Why don't I play it? Because I don't feel like bumping my head against the wall every two minutes when something goes wrong. I play games that have a great time to be there for a good story, great gameplay, and to say, man, this was fun. I'm not in it for frustration. So for people that are crying and saying that the game needs to do this to appeal to a bigger audience, I got news for you. Two million in ten days is pretty darn great, if you ask me. And if they, if from software, decide to change that core of what makes their games their own, then they are going to lose that fan base. I understand that you, you want to get your game to a certain level where everybody is able to enjoy it and everybody is going to rock with it. But I think that's when some games die. Because you're not appealing to that core audience that got you to where you are. You can't forget about the people that got you in the position that you're in in the first place. Keep rocking the same way you've been doing from software and forget those people that are saying that it should be an all-inclusive mode. Get the heck out of here, man. Moving on into the next story. Now, it was revealed. Now, this was uh, by um, a voice actress. Dag, I should have just included this in the other thing. Anyway, it was uh, revealed this week by a voice actress. Uh, her name is uh, Janina uh, Gavin, Gavin Carr. Uh, at a Star Wars celebration, and she has actually voiced uh, the character uh, Tate um, that was uh, in Horizon Zero Dawn. Well, she said that, oh man, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is in the works. Now she, and uh, let's see, let's see, what, what, what's the quote? She says, this is the quote, good grief, she says it's incredible. Wait till you see the sequel, you're gonna die. I know some secrets. You're gonna die. End of quote. So I don't think that she was supposed to, um, reveal this, but it was a co it was because of a cosplayer. A cosplayer had mentioned to her that she got into playing Horizon Zero Dawn because of her. And then she just, hey, she just came out with it and was like, man, guess what? Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Oh, it's in the works. I know stuff. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Your eyes are going to bleed. All of that stuff. Even though she didn't say that in the quote. I mean, good grief. That's what I'm taking away from it. Because, I mean, listen. Horizon Zero Dawn. I have it upstairs. I have about eight, ah, maybe seven hours in or something like that. 
I got out of the game. I did. It was other games that I wanted to play, and I kind of left it to the wayside. But it's one thing that I can say about Horizon Zero Dawn. First off, I will admit, that bow and arrow, that, that, that aiming of the bow and arrow, man, it was a little trying. Yeah, I darn. And maybe I need to stick at it a little longer, but nah, man, that bow and arrow game was just, ah, man, I didn't like the way that control, trying to aim and move and stuff. Ugh. But anyway, outside of that, though, the controls were still good. Great controls. I can't really speak on the story. The story was going in a great direction from what I played as far as her being a little girl growing up. She was a, uh, uh, spoilers really quickly. If you haven't played, um, one, two, three, here's spoilers. She was a, um, she, um, now nah, I forgot the goddamn storyline. Anyway, it, 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 it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. Um, check it out. But anyway, if the first one, my point is, if the first one was this good, Man, the second one, I think the first one sold like 10 million copies. The second one, I'm sure they are going to knock it all the way out of the park. I'm excited to know that they have this in the works. And man, oh man, I mean, Sony, they just keep coming with the hits, baby. Hit after hit after hit. So let's go ahead and move on. I think I can beat that story to death and I butchered it my bad now let's move into some quick news some more quick news now if you're dying for more info on Death Stranding Hideo Kojima and Norman Reedus are set to sit down with Jeff Keighley for a one hour well well for one hour on April 25th at the Tribeca Film Festival to discuss and I quote um pushing the boundaries of the video game medium and they're going to talk about how their relationship has established over working together on the title together end of quote now i wouldn't go into this thinking that you're going to get e3 levels of information about death stranding but i'm sure that man this is this is so interesting the tribeca film festival dang I mean, this is really interesting if you're just vying for some kind of information because it has been a bit of news out there saying that the game is taking a little longer than it was supposed to and it's actually behind schedule right now. So that's not, it hasn't been confirmed or denied, but that is out there in the atmosphere right now. So if you are just a person that, like I said, you're just dying to get that information, you can't wait till whatever event Sony puts on to show this off, then you might want to tune in once again on April 25th and see what's going on at Tribeca. Now, moving on. Now, <clears throat> this is in uh, Xbox news. Uh, Microsoft is airing a new episode of Inside Xbox premiering tomorrow, April 16th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where they will talk about their plans for E3 and Fan Fest. Now, the show will be one hour long. I think that's fantastic that it's going to be one hour. Uh, they also said they will also be sharing Xbox Game Pass news and more info on a update for Sea of Thieves anniversary update. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, man, I give it to you, Microsoft. You ain't giving up. That's all I ask. Don't give up on your IPs, man. Jeez, me Christmas. Now he continues, not he, but the story continued to say that Bethesda's upcoming uh, first-person shooter, Rage 2, will be there, and the Coalition studio head, Rod Ferguson, will be there, along with several surprises that they are saving for the show. So, I mean, listen, we know that... uh she whiz inside xbox has had some ups it's had some downs it's had some lackluster announcements in the past i mean could grieve minecraft coming to game pass oh jeez, that was cringy uh to say the least but i do think that for the first time not the first time, the second time, because overall i didn't think the last show was was horrible i just you know it was okay. I mean, it wasn't the best show, but it wasn't horrible like so many people made it out to be. But I do like the fact that, look, it's going to be one hour. 
that's a plus because a lot of people that have been watching inside Xbox for months now, I think it's been close to a year that they've been putting on that show. They've been saying it is entirely too long. Now I haven't looked at an inside Xbox at all up until this year. And the first one I saw was, what was that? Maybe February. So I'm brand new on the train. Okay. So I think that's fantastic that they're doing that. It's going to be an hour long. Rod Ferguson stopping by. That's dope. Who knows if they're going to show off some more gears. You never know. I don't know if they will because we're very close to E3 at this point in time, but maybe he'll tell us about some of the new mechanics that they're working on, maybe more about the story. It could go in several different directions with that. Um, Rage 2, that's a game that I'm very hyped up and excited about. Can't wait for that reveal. Think that's going to be marvelous. So, I mean, along with so many other um, several uh, surprises that they're saving, it's going to be great, man. It's going to be awesome. At least that's my hope. That's my hope. Now, keeping on with the Xbox theme into the final story. Now, according to a German outlet, okay, uh, that's called Win Future, the new discless Xbox One will sell for, man, this, this is a letdown. This is such a letdown. But it's going to sell for $250 and will include a one terabyte hard drive and it should release May 7th. Now, I'm starting to think that that is probably going to be announced at this latest Inside Xbox. Now, I've heard a lot of people saying that, you know what, I'm not even going to put it on people. I'm going to say me personally. $250 for a diskless Xbox, all digital, with one terabyte of hard drive space. I don't know, Microsoft. I don't know about this, brothers. I don't know. I thought that this was going to be about $179.99 because they were going to be saving costs with the with the, the disk drive. And I understand that the disk drive probably costs Microsoft around $20, maybe $25 per unit to put it in. So the savings wouldn't be gigantic. But, man, I mean, also, well, we got, we got to look at it on a bright side, though, because... If it's to be believed, I believe Sea of Thieves is supposed to come in a box. One of the Fordses is supposed to be in the box and something else. So you're essentially getting three games in the box already for $250, which that's if the rumor is to be believed by, what, what, what was it, Windows Central? If that's to be believed, people are, are unfairly in my in my in my very humble opinion, they are kind of putting Microsoft down a little bit much. If you're getting three games for $250, that's really not a bad deal. But once again, I don't know if everybody knows. Well, nobody knows if that's going to be true or not. Now, if you're selling this console for $250 and you're not including any games or anything like no game pass no xbox live in the box and they don't have to do that that's the thing they don't have to do anything they can just say look this is the price of the console this is what you get in the story they don't owe you anything they don't owe me anything you're paying for the console so if they go that route and they don't include anything i'm i am going to be honest and say i think that will be a bad bad move if they do that because they have to give people an incentive to say okay this is something brand new that we've never seen in console gaming before you won't be able to buy any physical discs GameStop, goodbye best buy no more target adios you won't see any more of those stores to get your games you're going to be on the microsoft store point blank that's it so for some people, that can be a little scary. But if you give them the console at a decent price, maybe they'll say, well, shoot, that's not bad. But once again, if they put the three games in there, it's not a bad deal. But man, I am rambling. That is the end of the gaming news this week. Good grief. Quite a bit of news. I'm so excited, man. Oh, my gosh. This, this just makes my day. But anyway. 
We're going to be back in just a few minutes after this week's video game theater. Stay tuned, guys. Lost today. Marius, you have proved that you can lead. You have earned the respect of the men. So, take this helmet and put it on. Legionaries! Salute your new centurion! Settle down, lads. Now, you know what you can expect from these barbarians. They are a race of rabid bastards who will fight us tooth and nail. But they don't know what they are up against. Rome is civilization. Rome is order! Rome is power! And out here, we are Rome! Commander, King Oswald's barbarian army is advancing on York. General Commodus and the 6th Cohort engage the enemy, but their fate is unknown. Secure the remaining boats and get them unloaded, and prepare the men. And welcome back, guys. Welcome back. We are in the final section of the podcast, and I have to ask you guys a question. It is about Microsoft. Since we ended with Microsoft, let's really finish the podcast on Microsoft. Now, my question to you guys is, is Microsoft out of touch with their fan base? Now, hear me out. Hear me out. I know I've been I've been very critical about Microsoft lately, and it's only because I want to see them do better. I want to see them prosper. I want them to be around in this gaming space because I truly believe that gaming needs Microsoft. You never want to have someone have a monopoly on any industry because it makes it horrible for the customer base. So hear me out really quickly. Microsoft seems to me seems to be making so many announcements about other consoles or or PC or streaming. Like Microsoft is talking about X Cloud. A Cuphead is going to the Switch. Um, shucks, today a Forza game. Not that I think the Forza game looks that great. Forza Street, it, it's gone to PC. It's going to mobile, but it's not coming to Xbox. Now, from what I understand, it's not that good of a game, so Phil Spencer might have been doing us a good service by keeping it off. Shout out to Hard 8 um, for that. But um, I ask this, though, because we haven't seen a lot of exclusive deals from Microsoft. Now, granted, uh, earlier in the news, they're saying that this new um, Star Wars game, it's going to be, they're going to have the, the rights to the game. So maybe we'll get some DLC from that game. But we haven't seen Microsoft really out there fighting. And that's my problem. It seems like these announcements that they're announcing are underwhelming. And I don't know how many times... Xbox fans, myself included, 
are going to say, let's just wait to E3. We've been saying this since 2013, and I understand Microsoft has these studios. They have the stuff baking in the oven, and we got to wait for the games to come out. But Microsoft, could you please, please just not forget about the Xbox fan base Throw us some exclusive content because right now it just doesn't seem like you guys are in the fight. Now I could be, I, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm looking at this from the wrong standpoint, but to me, man, I have to say, I feel pretty abandoned. I mean, now, I mean, by Microsoft, as far as a consumer, I feel pretty bad we haven't had any sequels. It doesn't look like we're going to get any sequels to the games that we wanted. Now, granted, they can blame it on us, the consumer, by saying nobody really supported Sunset Overdrive. Nobody supported Rise Son of Rome. It didn't have the best price point. I mean, not the price point. Didn't have the best reviews. Didn't have the best scores. So they just give up. And that's a problem for me with Microsoft. It seems like if their IPs don't hit the first time out the gate, that they just X them. Bam, it's over. I would love to see Microsoft do some of the same practices as Sony. And what I mean by some of the same practices, don't be afraid to give a sequel. A sequel usually does better than the original because you figure out things. You make things work better in the sequel. I mean, Uncharted 1, Uncharted 2. Night and day. Night and day with those games. Shout out the Crap Gamer for bringing that up. He was right about that. So that's my question to you guys this week. I've been very long-winded. I do apologize. But if you do want to be a part of this and give your opinion, you can do that two different ways, either by calling into the show, and that phone number is 443-216-9934, or you can email the show, and the email address is the Analog Circle Podcast at gmail.com. I was your host, Keon Mitchell, and this has been a fun one for me. I've enjoyed hanging out with you guys. It has been fantastic. But don't worry. Oh, oh, don't fret, my gaming friends, because we will be back at it again next week. But until then, until then, guys, always remember, It is not about the consoles. It is about the games. So with that being said, you guys take care. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.